everyone, Professor Mani here, and let me show you how to do a t-test hypothesis test. So we're in Pearson's MyLab statistics. So let me go ahead and walk you through this problem. So suppose a study reported that the average person watched 5.5 hours of television per day. So let's start off with that and let's do mu is the claim that it's 5.15 hours. A random sample of 15 people, well, there's N, gave the number of hours of television watch per day shown. At the 1% significance level, now that's alpha. So this 1% significance level, that's our probability of making a type one error or rejecting a true null hypothesis. Do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the amount of television watch per day last year by the average person differed from the value reported in the study. So the question that they ask is always the alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis, we have to assume that things haven't changed. So we're going to assume mu is still that same 5.15 hours. The alternative hypothesis is what we're testing. We're trying to see if mu is actually differed, so that's a not equal to, might be less, might be more, we don't know. We're just trying to see if it differed 5.15 hours. So let's go ahead and enter those in to make sure that we have the right answers. So let's see, we have mu equals 5.15. Now bear in mind the null hypothesis always has an equal sign. We will get to things later where it's not gonna have an, an equal sign because it's not a numeric value that we're talking about. but the null hypothesis is always what they call the status quo or assuming things haven't changed. So let's go ahead and check that. We see that we have the right answers. That's all good and well. It says find the T statistic. Now, the reason we're finding the T statistic and not the Z statistic is we don't have the population standard deviation, sigma. If we had sigma, we would use a Z test. Since we don't, we use a T test. All right, so we go through this. Let me go ahead and erase all this stuff. I'm gonna open up the data over here, click on this little symbol, open it in StatCrunch. So that all comes up for us, it's loading. It loads up all the data for us. All we do is we go stat, T stat, one sample with data. The data is in variable one, and then we do the null hypothesis. Now, since I forgot the null hypothesis, let's flip back to it and see what it was. Our null hypothesis was equal to 5.15 and then not equal to 5.15. So let's go back and put that in. So the null hypothesis, 5.15 hours, the null hypothesis not equal. And notice the equals here given because in a t-test or a z-test, it has to be something equals. And then once we put in the 5.15, we couldn't change that. The alternative always has the same value there. But then we just hit compute. All we're looking for in this case are two values here. One is the T statistic and one is the P value. We technically don't need the T statistic. We only need it because they're asking for us to enter it into the problem. That T statistic, 3.57 to two decimal places, is actually used by the computer to find the p-value. Since we're doing the p-value approach, all we really need is the p-value. So the p-value here is 0 0.003 if we go to three decimal places. Okay, so there's my t-statistic, my p-value. We can go back and answer the questions now. So the t-statistic to two decimal places, negative 3.57. And remember what that's saying is that data, the sample data is 3.5 standard deviations below the mean. The p-value is the probability that we would get the sample numbers or something more extreme if the null hypothesis were true. I like to just think of the p-value as the probability the null hypothesis is true. That's not literally what it means, but it's very close. It's related to that. So there's almost no chance the null hypothesis is true. So we have this, let's go ahead and check that one. That one's correct as well. 
And now we have to go to the decision. So two things happen. One, we have the decision. So let's write down this p-value. The p-value 0 0.003. What we do is we see if that is less than or equal to the sig significance level that we had is 1% alpha. And we see that it is less than 1%. That's 0.3% if we move the decimal versus 1%. It's clearly less than. Since it is less than or equal, we say, okay, the cutoff was 1% chance of essentially the null hypothesis being true would be our cutoff. If it's less than or equal to that, we're going to reject the null hypothesis and say, I don't think that's true. So that's what we say in this case. We say reject the null hypothesis. I don't believe the null hypothesis is true. It's too unlikely to be true. So I essentially throw that away and I go with the alternative. And so then I state my conclusion in terms of the alternative hypothesis. The question was, does it look like the hours of TV watch per day differed from the year shown? And we say, yes, the data is sufficient to show the alternative hypothesis, which in this case was that mu is not equal to 5.15 hours. So notice the conclusion is in terms of the null hypothesis. Rather, the decision whether or not to reject is in terms of the null hypothesis. The conclusion is in terms of the alternative hypothesis. And so now we can answer. So we say, yes, we reject the null hypothesis because it was too unlikely to be true. The data do provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the amount of television watched by the average person differed or is different from the value reported in the study. And so that's all there is to it. These obviously take a little practice. We've probably never done anything like this before, other than the z-test we just did in the last section. But if you don't really understand the p-value, I have another video on YouTube that talks about the p-value. You may want to watch that. But other than that, hopefully this helped you out. If you like the video, please click on like. Please subscribe to my channel. And other than that, just work on these and they'll come to you. Make sure you get them though, because we work on these the rest of the semester. So hypothesis testing is very important. All right, best of luck to you.